Good morning, everyone. We have some announcements. Popsicles with the Pastor is every Wednesday at 5.30 on the lawn at Houston. Um, it starts the first full week of July, so it's going on now. Also, they're having Bible study on the lawn every Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, and last week was the first of that as well. And they're studying aging, getting older. I thought that was interesting. Um, our community picnic is next Saturday. It's coming quickly. It's from 2 to 6 p.m. and it's at the soccer fields that are down here on up from the post office a little bit. And um, Ashley, do you have anything to announce? Are we having more meetings? wants to still donate. Say again. Anybody needs to, wants to donate, we still have some last minute things, like a few last minute things that we had just thought about. Um, and I need people, if you're going to bake, let me know. And I need to schedule and coordinate with the people that are baking to have a drop off here. Here at the church? Yes. Or my house, it does matter. But if you're baking, I need bakers. How about the people to man booths? Is that um, I mean, if that's you, if you want to volunteer, let me know so I can set you up. Because we have, yes. Room. Yeah, we'll get four. Um, to like help at a table, there's going to be um, a crap table with crafts for kids to do. There's a welcome table. Um, food needs tended to, that kind of thing. We have a game tent for the guys. Games, yeah, games will be set up on the field. To, to, um, for anybody to play. Pin the tail on Kirk. Yes. Say again? Pin the tail on Kirk. Kirk. Yeah. Put me first Kirk? on that list, please. You're sleeping on her. You better look out for her. I'm coming. He heard me. Oh. I'm coming. <laughs> um, also, that there's cornhole. I have to remember that. Cornhole. Bocce. Bocce. Croquet. Okay. Okay. We're going to have mitts down there. I mean, you name it. I'm marbles. Shoot. Um, oh, marbles. I thought you said marbles. I mean, I picked up every ones that they lost, so I just started throwing them in a the bag. Thought we'd shoot them. Yeah. So, it is going to be fun, even if, you know, if nobody shows up but us, we'll have fun. Okay, um, but keep praying that more people than that show up. The Blue Knights ride is on July 28th, which must be two weeks from today. Um, at 11.30, so after church, we'll go outside like we did last year and wait them on when they get here. Uh, car practice is Tuesdays at 6 p.m. If uh, you want to come for the cantata, remember why you need to come pretty soon, because we're starting, we're working on it. And um, if you do, and you're just coming for that, uh, we start with the cantata at 6.45. Bible study here on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. We're studying the disciples. Coffee club here on Thursdays at 10 o'clock, and that's just a social time. Um, we have all the things for sale that we've had for sale. We have the hearing assistant devices. If anybody um, needs that, see Jeff. We're still collecting our aluminum, aluminum cans. Our church council will be this Monday, tomorrow. We changed it from last week to this week. So it's tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Everybody's welcome, please. We need other people besides the same handful to make decisions. Um, any other announcements, Jess? We're going to start collecting school supplies, either for, um, Ashley's going to talk to her connection to Allison or CYS. So we're just going to collect school supplies and we'll get them to somebody that needs them. Did y'all hear that? Collecting school supplies. You have an announcement? Yeah, I, well, I mean, I just wanted to let people know that, I mean, everybody's aware of the cost that we have out in the parking lot. Um, Chris comes in and actually cleans it up real nice. It looks really, really good. Um, I did find a, a person that will do the engraving for on the bricks if anybody wishes to have one engraved now. Um, for the longest, for a while, the guy that we originally got them from, they, they don't do them anymore. Um, I found a guy, uh, the one I just had done for Zachary is back on the, um, 
Ledge. Your ledge back there. Um, if anybody wants to see it, it comes pretty close to matching what we already have back there. But if anybody is interested in one, just let me know. I can get it ordered for you and pick them up. Who does it here? Um, a guy out in McMurray here. Um, it, it's called Stones by Serena or something like that. Serena's his last name. It's just a guy that does it. Stones by Serena? Yeah. Or carving by Serena, maybe. He's in, and he does it out of his house. Cool. Yeah. Okay, good. What's the cost per room? $75. Yeah. Is that how much he charged? Yeah. To engrave it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Anything else? One last thing. We are starting to collect gently used coats. Coats? Um, we have been taking our clothes up from the rummage sale to Premier Washington. And the last thing that I asked them that they needed before I left, they desperately need coats for the patients that are there. Most of them don't come in with coats. So if you guys are start fall cleaning, bring them to me. I have a home for them. Their zippers don't even need to work. She said just something that they can drape over them to get most of the patients into the ambulances in advance. So oh, we're where did you say they were going? Premier. Premier. Yeah. Yeah. So this would be mostly adults. Yeah. Not adults. Yeah. Adults. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Men and women, I assume. All sizes. <coughs> Any other announcements? If not, then please be in an attitude of prayer during the prayer. <laughs>
now if you'll join me in the call for worship, God is your bullet. <coughs> All are welcome in the house of the Lord. Glad to hear the gospel of and the fellowships. Worship with clean hands and pure hearts. We are lifted up by the King of glory. We are adopted into the family of Christ. We will be the joy before our God. Now if you'll turn in your hymnals to page 101 from all the dwell below the skies. Perhaps you have come 
to royal dignity with just such a time as this. Then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do. After that, I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If you have won your favor, if I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition. In the lives of my people, that is my request. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is said that it is better to give than to receive, and this is our opportunity to be able to give back a small portion unto the Lord. May I please have an usher?
Kurt. All right, this morning children's message is going to be a little different because somebody is going to help with it. So, some of you may not know, but the picnic has a theme, and it's called Thank You for Becoming Our Friends. I have heard so many stories about Meadowlands 4 that I thought that we could incorporate that and maybe Jess and I will eventually have our own tribe eventually, that's what it's all about. But I have a little watermelon picker perfectionist here. So we thought we would bring four individual watermelons in here that are all different in their own special ways. But I wanted you guys to know, did you know that the watermelon is the official fruit of the summer? Okay. Well, you guys are all or not. But did you know in Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn, Puntain said, when one tastes watermelon, it knows what the angels eat. Did you know that? So, when I read that, I thought this would be the perfect time for her and I to do a children's sermon together. So, I'm going to let her take over her part now. They're going to turn into a pumpkin. Sugar. 
where the sugar seeps out. So the last box we want you to know before we leave is the watermelon is 5,000 years old. It's 92% water, so when you do cut it into cubes, you need to drain the water. But to do a fun-filled sweet treat of the summer, take an ice cube tray and make watermelon ice cubes. Um, the largest watermelon on record was made in Arkansas that weighed 268 pounds. And you can, a watermelon is 100% edible. You can pickle the rinds and you can eat the seeds. Store your melons at ambient temperatures to keep them for three weeks. Do not store them in direct sunlight. But if you buy them cold, keep them cold. Because you can't go from that. And the last thing, keep them wrapped in plastic, never in aluminum foil. So, there you go. How to pick a perfect watermelon. And if anybody would like to sponsor a friend for the picnic, you're more than happy to come see Tori, and she'll tell you how you can sponsor one of these friends for our picnic. So, we're gonna go into an attitude of prayer before we leave our children's sermon. Dear Lord Jesus, we hope our community picnic invites a lot of new members in so they can have the feeling of becoming new friends with our friends all right here at the Meadowlands Church. And we hope that everybody enjoyed our children's message this year and takes the knowledge that Tori brought from Mississippi on how to bring a watermelon, the yummy, delicious fruit of the summer, to their homes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Williamsburg Church. And we need to keep our country in prayer. Yesterday was just unbelievable. Now. Others? Elaine? Others this morning. Well, we've given thanks for a couple of different things since we've seen new people. My niece Alyssa and Grayson and Riley got hit big time with COVID. And as Alyssa said, when you're in bed too sick to lift your head and you have two babies crying, it's rough. But God answered her prayers and they're getting better, even though. Bakersfield turned off the electricity one evening last week. On that day, it was 116 degrees. They turned, they had to be without electricity, so no air moving. But they made it through, praise the Lord. And uh, I'm just gonna say thank you, Dave Dillon, because he saved us at home yesterday. Others this morning. All right. I'd like to thank everybody for their prayers and sympathy and cards for everything. It's so wonderful to have a family like we do here in Madlands. It was our honor to be there for you. Thank you. Ashley, say again. Um, this week, I probably have probably had the El Sapiest week of my life. My niece took her children to Myrtle Beach last Saturday, and um, we brought back four in Hayden's body. We lost our two-year-old Padua to a water incident. I will be traveling home on Wednesday to West Virginia to bury my two-year-old great niece. I don't know what happened, why it happened. All I know that is that her faith is very strong. I hate small towns with big mouths um, because you can only imagine what awful, terrible, gut-wrenching things people are saying. Um, she can't even go into town right now. Half of it is not even true or accurate. Um, but just keep her and our babies in uh, prayers because a seven, a uh, five, and a four year old should not see their sister that state. So we need a lot of prayers. Your niece is named Jesse. And I, her husband, too. I shouldn't leave him out. <clears throat> Thank you, Ashma. Others this week. Karen Hart. <laughs> okay, I'll go first, I guess. On Thursday morning at 8.30, Lucy's taking her driver's test. <laughs> and then when she's finished, she's not driving, but we're driving to um, Nashville, so I'm asking for travel marks to my hand. <laughs> she will not be driving me she does that, so. Well, you can let her drive no. from no. one house to the okay. next house for a pickup. Okay. I was just trying to get Lucy a little up here. <coughs> All right, uh, Karen G.
Any others this morning? Jess. Um, my dad was in the hospital last week um, for fluid retention, and um, he wants to see his doctors this week, and seems to be doing better, but just prayers that the medicine keeps working. Okay. Anyone else? Jeanette. Prayers for my brother. He had to have a kidney removed. Your brother's name, please. <coughs> Nelson's his name. Nelson? Are there any others this morning? Not seeing any, then let us go into the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to gather together and to share our joys and our concerns with one another. And now, Lord, we place them into your loving, tender, caring arms, knowing that that is the best place we can put someone. Lord, we ask for healing power for all of those who need it. For those with fluid retention, um, still recovering from COVID, and um, cancer and all that, Lord. We just ask that you help heal them. And for those who are recovering from surgery, especially um, kidney issues, Lord, we just ask that you be with them. Be with all those who will be traveling this coming week. Um, give them safe journeys. And for one of our own who will be taking that as some call it a dreaded driving test, some look at it as a happy occasion. Be with them as they, um, and give them calmness as they take that test, especially the driving part of that test. <coughs> and for all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, Lord, be with them. Wrap your loving arms around them. Give them peace and comfort and a gentle reminder that you are there for them to lean upon in the difficult days that lie ahead. And Lord, we pray for our nation as it seems to be going crazier and crazier. Just be with this nation and help us heal and come together. And for all the unspoken ones, Lord, may they be answered as well. We pray all this, praying the prayer that your Son taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we
also straight. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to come and boldly state what it is we do believe without fear. To be able to come and read your word, hear your word, and live it. And now, Lord, we pray for words that have been prepared, that through them or in spite of them, your will will be made known. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I'll never forget the time that my best friend told me about a shopping trip for furniture that their family took. They went desk shopping, and he needed a new desk for his office, and he and his wife promised the kids desks for their rooms. Sarah was especially enthused. She had come home from school, and guess what she does? Any idea what she does when she comes home from school? She plays school. Yeah. Never did I do that as a kid. I tried to forget the classroom and activities, not rehearse them. But they decided to go get these desks. So off to the furniture store they went. And when they buy furniture, they go to two extreme opposites. So antique that it's fragile, or so new that it's unpainted. So this time they opted for the latter and entered a store in the buff furniture. They, the kids successfully, quickly made their selections and Earl set out to do the same. Somewhere in the process, Sarah learned they weren't taking the desk home that day. And this news disturbed her so deeply. Earl tried to explain that the piece had not been painted and they would deliver the desk in about four weeks. Oh, did her eyes fill with tears. But Daddy, I'm gonna take it home today. Much to her credit, she didn't stomp her feet and demand her way. She did, however, set on an urgent course to change Earl's mind. Every time he turned a corner, she was waiting on him. Daddy, don't you think we could paint it? Daddy, I just want to draw some pictures on your desk. Daddy, please let us take it home today. And after a bit, she disappeared only to return with arms wide and bubbling with discovery. Guess what, Daddy? It'll fit in the trunk of our car. You and I know that seven-year-olds have no clue what will and won't fit in a car. But the fact that she had measured the trunk with her arms softened Earl's heart. The clincher, though, was the name that she had called him. Daddy, can't we please take it home? So the Bohr family took home a desk that day. Earl heard Sarah's request for the same reason God hears ours. Her desire for her own good. What dad would want his child to spend more time writing and drawing. Sarah wanted what Earl wanted for her. She only wanted it sooner. When we agree with what God wants, his heart as well softens for us. 
Sarah's request was heartfelt. God, too, is moved by our sincerity. The earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power. But most of all, I was moved by the response that Sarah called Earl Daddy because she is his kid, after all. And he heard her request. Because we are his children, God hears our request. The king of creation gives special heed to the voices of his family. He is not only willing to hear us, he loves to hear us. He even tells us what to ask him. Thy kingdom come. We're often content to ask for less. We enter the throne room of God with a satchel full of requests. Promotions desired, pay raises wanted, transmission repairs needed, and tuitions due. We typically say our prayers as casually as we'd order a burger at the drive-thru. I'll have one solved problem and two blessings. Cut the hassle, please. But such compliancy seems inappropriate in the chapel of worship. Here we are before the king of kings. The praise still needed. The promotion is still desired. But is that where we start? Jesus tells us how to begin. When you pray, pray like this. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. When you say thy kingdom come, you're inviting the Messiah himself to walk into your world. Come, my king, take your throne in our land. Be present in my heart. Be present in my office. Come into my marriage. Be the Lord of my family, my fears, and my doubts. This is who, this is no feeble request. It's a bold appeal for God to occupy every corner of our lives. Who do you think asks such a question? Who are you to ask God to take control of your world? You are his child, for heaven's sake, and you ask boldly. So let us come boldly to the very throne of God and stay there to receive his mercy and to find grace to help us in our time of need. A wonderful illustration of this kind of boldness is the story of Hadasha. Through her language and culture are an atlas apart from ours, she can tell you about the power and prayer of a king. There are a couple of differences though. Her request was not her to her father, but to her husband, the king. Her prayer wasn't for a desk, but for the delivery of her people. And because she entered the throne room, because she opened her heart to the king, she changed his plans in millions of people in 127 different countries were saved. Oh, I would have loved to have met Hadasha. But since she lived in the 5th century BC, such an encounter is not likely. We'll have to encounter with reading about her in the book that bears her name, the book of Esther. Let's review the central characters. Xerxes was the king of Persia. He was an absolute monarch over the land of India to Ethiopia. Let Xerxes raise an eyebrow and the destiny of the world would change. In this respect, he symbolizes the power of God. For our king guides the river of life, and he doesn't even raise an eyebrow. Haman was the right-hand man of Xerxes. Read every word about the man, and you'll find nothing good about him. He was nothing but an egotistic who wanted the worship of every person in the kingdom. Perturbed by a particular minority called the Jews, he decided to exterminate them. He convinced Xerxes that the world would be better with a holocaust and set a date for the genocide of all of Abraham's children. Haman is a servant of hell and a picture of the devil himself, who has no higher aim than to have every knee bow as he passes. 
Satan also has no other plan than to persecute the promised people of God. He comes to steal and kill and destroy. He is filled with anger because he knows he does not have much time. Since the lie in the garden, he has sought to derail God's plan. In this cast, Satan hopes to destroy the Jews, thereby destroying the lineage of Jesus. For Haman, the massacre is a matter of expediency. For Satan, it's a matter of survival. He will do whatever it takes to impede the presence of Jesus in the world. That's why he doesn't want you to pray as Jesus taught, thy kingdom come. Esther, Mordecai's adopted daughter, became queen by winning a Miss Persia contest. They say the beauty suit part of the contest was where she really wanted. But in one day, she went from obscurity to royalty, and in more ways than one, she reminds you of, of you. Both of you are the resistance of the palace. Esther, the bride of Xerxes, and you, the bride of Christ. Both of you have access to the throne of the king, and you both have the counselor to guide and to teach him. Your counselor is the Holy Spirit. Esther's counselor was Mordecai. It was Mordecai who urged Esther to keep her Jewish nationality a secret. It was also Mordecai who persuaded Esther to talk to Xerxes about the pending massacre. You may wonder why she would need an encouragement. Malachi <coughs> must have wondered the same thing. Listen to the message he got from Esther. No man or woman may go to the king in the inner courtyard without being called. There is only one law about this. Anyone who enters must be put to death unless the king holds out his golden scepter. Then that person may live, and I have not yet been called to go to the king for 30 days. As strange as it may sound to us, not even the queen could approach the king without an invitation to enter his, court, his throne room. Uninvited was to risk a visit to the gallows. But Mordecai convinced her to take this risk. If you wonder why I see Mordecai as a picture of the Holy Spirit, watch how he encourages her to do what is right. Just because you live in the king's palace, don't think that out of all the Jewish people, you alone will escape. If you keep quiet at this time, someone else will help and save the Jewish people. But you and your father's family will die. And who knows, you may have been chosen queen for just as this. <coughs> Watch how Esther responds. Esther puts on her royal robes and stood in the inner courtyard of the king's palace, facing the king's hall. When the king saw Queen Esther standing in the courtyard, he was pleased. He held out to her the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther went forward and touched it at the end. What follows is the rapid collapse of Satan's deck of cards. Haman schemes to string up Mordecai, the only man who doesn't grovel at his feet. Esther plans to throw a couple of banquets for Xerxes and Haman. At the end of the second banquet, Xerxes begs Esther to ask for something. Esther looks sheepishly as the, at the floor and says, well, now that you mention it, there is one small favor I've been wanting to ask. And she proceeds, proceeds to inform the king about the raging um, anti-Semite who was hell-bent on killing her friends like rats, which meant that Xerxes was about to lose his bride if he didn't act soon. And you don't want that. Xerxes demanded the name of the murderer, and Hammond looked for all the exits. Esther split the spilled the beans, and Xerxes lost his cool. He storms out the door, only to return and find Haman at the feet of Esther. Haman is begging for mercy, but the king thinks he's making a move on the queen, and before Haman has a chance to explain, he's handed to the same gallows he built for Mordecai. 
Haman gets Mordecai's rope. Mordecai gets Haman's job. Esther gets a good night's sleep, and the Jews live to see another day. And we get a dramatic reminder of what happens when we approach our king. Like Esther, we have been plucked out of obscurity and given a place in the palace. Like Esther, we have royal robes. She was dressed in cloth. We're dressed in righteousness. It is our choice whether or not we will stand and be bold, or we think someone else can do it. We need to be bold. We need to rise to the occasion that Christ has called us and to proclaim his name among our life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this reminder of a young girl who saved her people. Help us to boldly state your love for all so that all may know your love, your grace, and your peace. In your holy name we pray. Amen. If you turn in your hymnal to number 181, Jesus Christ the Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. <coughs>